Okay, and so from where I've left off, I've got the barge concepts, VFB2, variable feedback, blend loop. Um, I don't really use the feedback option on this right now. It's really just more of a blend loop pedal. But um, <coughs> the feedback blend will basically, if you tap this button here, it'll basically just have your signal just feedback, which is really cool for distortion. You can do controlled feedback squeals and stuff like that. Um, but right now it's not really what I'm using it for. Maybe at some point in the future I will find something to do with it, but right now I just I don't have anything. Uh, so from there it goes in a loop to the DD5, PS3, uh, RV3, the BF2 flanger, uh, another RV3, digital dimension DC3, uh, digital delay DD3, and those were all in the previous videos, but the Maleco Chiclet Reverb is new, and the EHX Holier Grail is also new. Um, just a bunch of reverb stuff can get really washy, and uh, for a bunch of the ambient stuff that I play, it can make uh, some really cool soundscape kind of stuff, just wall of noise. Uh, and then from the Holier Grail, it goes back into the VFB2 here, and... That's the end of that loop. So we got a bunch of modulation effects um, just in a loop. Uh, for one of my band's songs, uh, I've got all of those on and just doing some pick scrape stuff, but with all of the all of the modulation effects on, it's just really spacey and just really huge sounding, which is pretty cool. Um, from here, it goes out of the VFB2, and it goes all the way into the Aguilar Agro, which is also new. Uh, distortion pedal, pretty sweet. Um, the full tone earlier, that was mild distortion. That uh, pro tone buzzard is ridiculous over-the-top distortion. And then this one here is kind of somewhere in between. Uh, right now I'm using it a lot in conjunction with the DL4. Uh, for one of my band songs, uh, I've got a little bit of a distortion and delay thing going on. It's kind of ambient, but since it's got the distortion, it's not really ambient. So it's between ambient and aggressive, but it's kind of a middle ground between the two. Um, I've also got the Cathedral Stereo Reverb by Electro Harmonics. I like that one a lot. I've got it on the plate setting. Uh, and if anyone's got a cathedral, try these settings out here. It is fucking badass. Um, it's really ridiculous plate reverb. It's really rich sounding, really lush, lots of uh, lots of overtones. I love it. Uh, the Mad Professor Deep Blue Delay. Uh, it's a really nice boutique delay pedal. Um, kind of basic controls. You've got your level, uh, repeats, delays. So I just used this on the intro to one of the songs. I used the Cathedral and the Delay together. Um, and then that goes into the MXR, which is on the previous video. It's just a DI. The same with the Tone Hammer. Uh, let's see. Then it goes into the Akai E2. I'm pretty sure that this one's new, but essentially it's just uh, I'm only using it as a phrase sampler, a looper. Um, some other new stuff. There's the Morley... Fuzz Wah, the PWF Power Wah Fuzz. Uh, it's, it's a nice pedal. It's old from the 70s, I think. Um, it's a really crunchy fuzz, and then the Wah built in makes for a really interesting Wah Fuzz effect. Uh, those of you who like Metallica, Cliff Burton used one of those. Um, we've also got the Brown Dog, which is th the same company as the Squeezer in the previous video. Uh, it's got it's got a really good gated fuzz. It's it's kind of like the Tone Bender, but a little bit more clean, a little bit more modern, and I think a little bit more uh, synthy. It can get more synthy than the Tone Bender. The Tone Bender to me is really just a really ridiculous distortion pedal. And not that that's a bad thing, but it's not really fuzz the way that I would consider fuzz to be. Um, see, we've got the BF3 flanger, which is essentially the same thing as the BF2, just a little bit more options. Qtron Plus Auto Wah, which I'm pretty sure was in the last video. If it wasn't, it's just a quacky uh, Auto Wah by Electro Harmonics. 
nice pedal. I don't use it very much right now, but I'm trying to find some more room for it. Got the Flanger Hoax by Electro Harmonics, which I'm hopefully, when I get the setting right, going to be using it for oscillation and perhaps just a really over the top flanger kind of thing. Uh, let's see, the white boss pedal in there is the noise suppressor, and that is just to isolate some noisy pedals and reduce the hum that they create. Let's see, we got the full tone bass drive, which was in the previous video. There is the Dunlop 535Q wah with the Guitar Labs True Bypass wah pad. Uh, I'm not going to explain that, just look it up. It's made out of Poland. It's a really cool thing that uh, makes your wah not suck your tone out completely. Highly recommended if you're going to use a wah for a guitar or bass. Uh, but look it up. There's the Woolly Mammoth, Zvex Woolly Mammoth. Uh, really cool fuzz pedal. A little bit more synthy than the Tone Bender or the Brown Dog would be. Uh, but it's a really cool pedal. I like it. Uh, then there's the VT Bass. Uh, a lot of bass players know this as one of those pedals that you absolutely need to have on your board. Uh, it's a character pedal by Tech 21, and right now I've got it on kind of a distortion setting uh, that's more mild than the full tone, just really light dirt. The green boss pedal there is a TR2, which is tremolo. I'm thinking about putting one of those at the end of the chain so that I can use a tremolo effect on all of the uh, all of this all of the stuff in the chain which can just make for some really ridiculous kind of wall of sound things then the Proco rat in the back there uh, it's a 1980s Proco rat with the LM 308 chip in it it's a really cool distortion if you ever listen to like Russian circles uh, or circus survive they've both both of their bass players have got one of those pedals uh, so does Justin Chancellor from Tool. You know, it's a really, it's a really well-known distortion pedal. It's really nice. I like it. Uh, I'm not using it very much right now, though. And then for people who have asked me what my rig is, there it is, the SWR Megalith 810. Though I might be getting rid of it soon to upgrade to some Emperor cabs. So if anyone's interested in the Megalith, uh, let me know. We can possibly figure something out. Uh, the Sun 300T, which is by far my favorite amp that I've ever used, ever. It's loud as shit. I've got it on like one and three quarters, and it's louder than my guitar player's uh, Sun and Ampeg with a Marshall, and then my other guitar player's Sun and a PV5150 and two Sun cabs. Um, louder than all four of those cabs put together. Uh, especially through the Megalith, but it, does, it doesn't have quite as much low end as I want. I mean, I'm tuning down to B, and I really I need to get internal organ rearrangement before I'm happy. So the Emperor thing that I'm going for is going to have much bigger speakers um, than the Megalith, so it'll be way more bassy and a little bit less high end, hopefully. Uh, should be a really badass rig. So again, if you want to buy the Megalith, it'll help me fund my purchase of Emperor cabs, it'd be much appreciated, or if you just want to donate money, certainly don't expect you to, but if you're feeling generous, please do. Uh, let's see, the 300T has got two channels, I really only use one of them, I've got enough distortion pedals that I really don't need to switch to the second channel on the actual amp. Uh, it's 300 watts all tube, you can do it at a 2, 4, and... Uh, 8 ohm load, 2, 4, and 8, or maybe it's 2, 4, and 16. Right now I've got it a 4 ohm load for the Megalith. Um, really loud, really cool. I like it a lot. So that's the rig rundown, and then two new bases. I've got the Music Man Stingray 4 string 2001. Got it for a smoking deal off of a guy on talkbase.com. Uh, this Stingray has been modified it's got all black hardware so it's got black uh black control panel black knobs black bridge uh black tuners uh so that's that base like the stingray a lot it's giving a lot of really nice treble stuff <coughs> and when i don't need treble i go to this base 
which is a 1974. Got it for a really good deal on eBay. Uh, like it a lot. It's old. It's big. It's mean. Uh, it's maple. And it's got a moving pickup. So more bass, more treble, and somewhere in between. You can basically just move it and put it wherever you want. It's only got two controls. It's got a volume and a tone. It's got the input jack right there. So it's really basic, but it's mean. It's really nice. I like it a lot. 1974. Got it on eBay. Everything's original. This guy that I bought it from, I guess, never used it. So it still had the tags on it. Still got an original case. It's in great condition. I'm super stoked about this. Um, and now I will plug everything in and play some for you.